Ah, the N64 era. A time of innovation, blocky graphics, and eternal classics. Or rather, as I like to call it, the age of the 3D collectathon platformer. Launched by the groundbreaking Super Mario 64 in 1996, and continuing well into the GameCube's lifespan in the mid-2000s, this was a period of colorful mascots hopping around fully realized 3D worlds, hoping to scavenge every star, treasure, and birth certificate that they could get a hold of. Every game developer worth its salt knew they would either have to innovate or die trying, but only one company was able to pull off the genre better than even Nintendo itself. That company was named Rare, and their game was called Banjo-Kazooie. Released in 1998, Banjo-Kazooie improved on the formula established by Mario's most recent adventure in nearly every way possible. A memorable cast of characters, an incredible range of abilities to unlock, and an absolutely perfect soundtrack written by the soon-to-be-famous Grant Kirkhope all helped push Banjo-Kazooie over the top and into the pantheons of impeccable game design. So, what do you do after you've successfully perfected a genre? Well, you develop a sequel, of course, and that's where Banjo-Tooie comes in. Uh, I know we're in the middle of a groove, but can I just butt in for a second? I really seriously need to know who the hell was the genius that decided to name the sequel Banjo-Tooie? Like, th that wouldn't fly today, but to a kid back then, it, it makes perfect sense. Banjo-Kazooie, then comes Banjo-Tooie, and then... Oh man, I wish there was a Banjo-3. Uh... Eh. Anyways, Banjo-Tooie is, in my humble opinion, one of the greatest sequels of all time, and a prime example of how to expand a series when it comes time to, well, actually make it a series. The way that Tui improves and escalates above everything that Kazooie laid the foundations for is absolutely mind-blowing, but surprisingly enough, the most impressive part of banjo Tui's design is not in its differences. It is in its similarities to its forefather that a truly special moment is made possible. You see, many game companies, when tasked with developing a sequel to a hit game, are forced to rely on the same engine that the original was built on. This greatly decreases the production time of the new game. Why stop and make a whole new engine when you could just slap a few new effects on the old one and call it a day? And that's what most developers end up doing, trying to hide their reliance on older tech by making little changes to the visuals and game feel, and in the end just causing a disconnect between the two entities that may not entirely be for the better. So what did Rare do? Well, they didn't even try to hide what they were doing, and in doing so, they created something beautiful. Compared side by side, Kazooie and Tui look nearly identical, and some of the pessimists out there might immediately take offense at how much content from Kazooie that Tui reuses. Not just character models and sound bites, but the entire opening areas for both games are nearly identical. But that alone is part of the genius of Banjo Tui. Banjo Kazooie, when taken on its own, was a simple story about Gruntilda the Witch kidnapping Banjo's sister and his classically inspired quest to rescue her. While twisted with Rare's unique brand of humor, the story had this fairy tale like sense of innocence. Banjo and all his friends lived together in this idyllic valley with a mountain, while the main hub of the entire game was the witch's exaggerated and over the top lair. This tale was a compact and easy one. And then comes Banjo Tooie, which blows Kazooie out of the water in terms of scope. It's the same graphics, the same type of music, but it all feels like a more ambitious continuation of the first game. All of the moves you collected across Kazooie's multitude of worlds? You already know them all, and you'll need them to become even more powerful while exploring the much vaster worlds of this second game. The fairy tale references are few and far between, and Banjo's sister is nowhere to be found. This time, the entire world is at stake. Hell, the game opens with Gruntilda flat out freaking murdering Bottles the Mole. It all goes to show a much darker and epic adventure awaits you this time around. But what about reusing that same opening area? Well, that's what makes this sequel so impactful. The small changes that were made to Spiral Mountain all show the amount of destruction that Gruntilda's new escapades are causing, and makes the sunny innocence of the first game seem like a distant memory. Even the bridge to Gruntilda's old lair is broken. 
but amazingly enough, the developers saw fit to let the players still be able to fly inside and get a small glimpse of the lobby of where they spent so much time in the previous game. The rubble placed everywhere adds to the feeling that if the area were just to be cleaned up a little, you'd still be able to wander through to Mumbo's Mountain or Gobi's Desert. The vast world of both games feels connected. Perhaps the greatest example of this is the cavern through which Gruntilda dug and made her escape, not present in the original game, but appearing in the familiar landscape and funneling you out into the larger world in which the majority of Banjo-Tooie takes place. It maintains that beautiful charade that the Jinjo village was there all along during your adventures in Banjo-Kazooie. You just didn't have the means to find it. Yes, things certainly were different back during that era. Today, games all have to struggle to set themselves apart, and bursts of creativity and color are few and far between. In an age filled with inspiration and bold design choices of all types, Rare looked back and realized that for once, similarities would have a bigger impact than something new. They built a shared world between games that didn't exist just in two separate cartridges, but within the player's mind. And to a young Canadian boy, that was simply magical. My name's Josh C. Joshua, and that was really freaking clever. Have a game you'd like to see on the show? Leave something in the comments saying which game and why. And as always, if you want to help a poor Canadian student out, like, comment, and subscribe. P.S. Making this video go viral would be really freaking clever. See you next time.